Latest update how Ethereum exchange into one coin. What is the Ethereum merge? The merge integrated Ethereum's original execution layer with its new proof-of-stake consensus layer, officially transitioning the network's consensus mechanism to proof-of-stake. Formerly referred to as the Ethereum 2.0, Ethereum's consensus layer has now fully merged with the original blockchain execution layer. The merge was completed on September 15, 2022, marking the Ethereum network's transition from proof-of-work. POW to proof-of-stake, POS, according to the network. Merge has brought down Ethereum's energy consumption by around 99.95%. From a technical perspective, the merge saw Ethereum's original execution layer, or the manner, merge with its new POS consensus layer called the Beacon Chain. The merge is just the first step in Ethereum's development roadmap, which includes succeeding stages such as the Surge, the Verge, the Purge, and the Splurge. According to Ethereum co-creator Vitalik Buterin, the merge marks about 55% of the development work set to be done on the network. Ultimately, the goal is to make the network more scalable, sustainable, and secure while remaining decentralized. The merge eliminated the need for POW, enabling the network to be secured by Ethereum staking. Staking gives Ethereum holders a chance to collect rewards by providing the necessary computing power to validate transactions and secure the network. This also means that since the merge, all transactions on the network are now being validated by Ethereum stakers instead of miners. The second major shift triggered by the move to POS is the diminished issuance of Ether. ETH via rewards to validators for their efforts in preserving the network, resulting in ETH becoming a deflationary asset. Currently, Ethereum's staking mechanism only accepts deposits that cannot be withdrawn. At the moment, Billions worth of ETH is staked on the network and stuck therein until a withdrawal feature is added by Ethereum's developers down the line. 2. What does the merge mean for Ethereum miners? The network now uses proof-of-stake to validate transactions, thereby rendering Ethereum GPU mining largely unprofitable, if not completely obsolete. The Ethereum network's main net has relied on proof-of-work since its genesis, with miners validating blockchain transactions left and right. However, Ethereum's proof-of-stake layer, or the beacon chain, uses builders who bundle transactions together and validators to verify transactions. The amount of cryptocurrency a builder or validator owns will determine their ability to select or validate blocks. In a bid to make the network more sustainable, the merge combined these two layers and adopted POS fully, making Ethereum mining an unproductive way to earn rewards as validators are now more incentivized to preserve the network. The network previously held around 95% of total GPU hashing power, allowing miners to validate transactions and earn rewards. Under POS, a validator's cryptocurrency is at stake, which acts as a disincentive for them to act maliciously. Following the merge, Ethereum's hash rate has also noticeably dropped to zero and has stayed there since. Generally, lower hash rates mean that a network is using less computing power to add and verify transactions on a blockchain. In the case of Ethereum, the drop in hash rate is mainly because miners have either turned off their rigs or switched to other POW-based cryptocurrencies that are more profitable to mine. How does Ethereum's new consensus mechanism work? Where is miners in a proof-of-work system put their capital at risk by investing energy to validate a block? Validators in a proof-of-stake system put their cryptocurrency at stake. In order for a validator to be up and running on the network, they first need to deposit 32 ETH into a smart contract. Once deposited, the funds are locked and the validator is ready to begin staking. The staked ether serves as collateral, meaning it can be destroyed if the validator acts maliciously. There are also other ways to stake ether aside from running a validator node. One could participate in staking via a centralized exchange, join a staking pool, or delegate staking via the staking service provider.